Hi, this is Anna Sofia Wintersu. Some of you know me as uh, Loparefe, and this is my weekly podcast, um, Knit Etc., which is a temporary name, but maybe it stays. <laughs> we will see. Um, so, this is a weekly podcast in which I try to answer questions you maybe have. You can ask me on Instagram, YouTube, or wherever you find me. <laughs> and I try to answer them here and I maybe show you also what I'm knitting. <laughs> Let's see what the future brings. Um, so this is my second episode. Um, there's still a lot of... Um, I have to figure out. It's a little learn curve and I'm rumbling. <laughs> Let's get started. Um, so I'm wearing my... Um, Vark sweater and uh, this is one of my um, like can you see it? <laughs> yeah. one of my oldest uh, designs and um, it's knitted in um, Letloppy by Istex so Icelandic yarn and um, it's a iron weight sweater and um, there's a thicker winter version of it I showed you in one of my uh, wonderful uh, knitting podcast videos, how you call it, yeah, <laughs> and that one is even more popular, that's uh, the most popular pattern I ever made, um, yeah, I like the sweater a lot, I wear it quite a lot, and um, because just it's grey, <laughs> so it fits to a lot of things, and I also, I just like how it fits, it's like, not too big, not too small, um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. And I put myself a little bit more on the back today. Um, I have only one lens, which is kind of a pretty portrait close-up lens, so I have to sit actually quite in the back for you to see me all the way. <laughs> um, so I have to look over to the questions you had a little bit closely. Um, okay. First, I'm going to show you what I'm knitting. So, last week I showed you a little beginning of a west I was planning to finish. And um, I did not finish it. <laughs> but uh, I can say, I can show you how far I got with it at least. So, um, this is a pretty oversized west. And it's, um, it, I'm holding um, an arm weight together with two fingering weight yarns to get a gauge of about um, 10, uh, 11 stitches, I would say it's 11 stitches, yeah, <laughs> on uh, 4 inches or um, 10 centimeters. And so the reason why I haven't finished it, because this is a really, um, let's see, this is a really, really quick knit is, um, it's really falling down here, it's not holding so well up. <laughs> it's just I run out of yarn and I have to wait uh, to get new yarn and... But it's not much left and it's just meant to be really loosely. To be worn just over whatever you... Like your... It can be a different sweater, maybe a dress. And I plan on attaching um, two eye cords. One here and then one lower. Once I'm finished with this um, vest. And I really like to knit vests at the moment. So I made one for my son um, on the same day when I couldn't continue on this one. And I will put a photo here because it's drying right now. So it's really... Um, I don't want to kind of ruin the, the fit of it. <laughs> so I will show you the finished one maybe next time. But you can already see a photo of it and um, I will make an adult version of that as well. Not this one, the one for my son I made. <laughs> and I'm actually looking for test knitters uh, if you're interested. And um, that's exactly so a vest with the same gauge. Um, and it's knitted in one piece. But it looks like it has a seam around here when you see the photo. It's like little bubbles here. But it's only knitted in one piece and you pick up stitches here and there and I will show you more when I actually have it in my hand <laughs> so you can see it easier. Easier, easier. Okay, um, 
Okay, so you wanted to know, you wanted to see the inside of my sweaters and specifically colorwork sweaters. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm gonna show you a few sweaters I made and I'm gonna show you um, a few sweaters I like and I also show you some really bad examples. <laughs> so um, I turned this sweater already inside out. And as you can see, this is um, this one is a drop shoulder fit sweater, which means um, it has a stick. So you knit the body. I knitted the body up first, and I made the I added the stick for the armholes, um, and those are being cut later. And um, the sleeves are knitted separately up, and then sewn in. And I'm using this as an example because. Um, like these kind of sweaters are they're just a little bit more work than a circular <laughs> yoke sweater and you see the color work the stranded uh, color work here um, usually people tell you to um, kind of you want to twist the yarn in the back after every third stitch when you do different colors I sometimes do it every fourth stitch or fifth it depends really like here's for example like a, it is only two colors in that one uh, row and it's um, the white you use uh, five stitches a white color and then one stitch a gray one so I just go all the way <laughs> those five stitches and so it depends really also what yarn you use I guess and um, so this is lat loppy so this works pretty okay and okay, I'm rumbling again, but uh, this is a clean example of um, a drop shoulder sweater. I have to always look here a little bit, so I'm in the right, I can see the screen down there. <laughs> okay, so, okay, you see I made a little, um, how, how would you call this? It's like a little band um, you kind of do to hide the seams. I will show you an example. Um, <laughs> after this which doesn't have this so it gives the sweater a really clean look because if you don't add it it's not gonna be very clean at all and um, what you can do is you could for example also just use fabric and sew in some fabric but um, I think this is a really good easy way I feel fabric there's like some Okay, so this one is in the same yarn knitted as this one, which means, um, so let lobby, I use the sweaters outdoors and uh, if this wool sweater gets wet, it doesn't really get wet <laughs> because it's very well insulated, but let's say this was um, cotton, like just uh, some str uh, fabric um, scrap or something similar, um, that part would get wet and it would also dry slower. So it makes sense to use the same yarn when you do this kind of um, things. <laughs> yeah. So this is the sweater and I can also turn it around. And then it will look like... <laughs> like this. And um, this sweater is called um, the Dog Musha sweater. And... It's also in quite old, old design, uh, 2020, I think, <laughs> something like that. Okay, that's how it looks. So you see um, a dog musher with um, a row of sled dogs <laughs> and uh, wolf heads and paws on top. So that is this one here. And now I'm going to show you a bad example. And this is this sweater. So I made the sweater and I really wanted to wear it right away. And it's just, when I do those kind of things, it just means I'm not ever gonna fix, for example, the loose ends, which I'm gonna show you now, <laughs> which are hanging at the bottom. And, oh god, here, this side looks pretty bad too. Like, you see, they just hang around and... This sweater is already felted from wearing it so much. Um, yeah, I just made it and I wanted to wear it right away. I didn't even block it. I have never washed this sweater. <laughs> and at least not um, if you have watched my last video, I talked about 
um, that I like to put my sweaters into snow or lay them into snow. Snow. <laughs> and so I was doing that with this one, but I have not washed it actually. And uh, yeah, so I didn't um, weave in the threads at all. And so here, this is again a drop shoulder sweater, which is also why I choose this one here. Because you can really see, if you don't add this little band I just showed you, it looks uh, really bad. <laughs> yeah, and oh you see even like some... This is a way, like, this is shameful. <laughs> This is way shameful and I should be embarrassed to show, but I'm really like, I'm not embarrassed to show this. It's, um, it's like there's a reality <laughs> which everyone has to face and everyone has to see at some point, but usually people fix it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh, I do usually, but not sometimes I don't. And oh, wait, I have not shown you the other side of this one actually. So let me turn it around. So, um... So this sweater is um, called Skolohati and it's about the two wolves um, chasing the moon and sun doing Ragnarok. Have you heard of this before? Um, let me know if you would like me to talk about it maybe in the next video. <laughs> Just a wool backstory. Um, okay, this is how the sweater looks and uh, as I just said, um, so you see it is paws and you kind of see the colors are being um, switched around and it represents uh, the moon, the shadow and the sun, the light and it's kind of this play of sun and light and moon and shadow and it's about the two wolves <laughs> and yes that's how this sweater looks. Um, I like this sweater a lot and I like these colors a lot too. I think it's um, everyone has colors you know, you use a lot and which suit you the best in a way, I guess. <laughs> and I think these are my colors. <laughs> so, yeah, this is Skolohati. Let me know if you want to hear more about the story. And um, I have another sweater I want to show you. And I choose this one. Okay. And so why did I choose this sweater? Um, the reason, so you see it's a circular yoke and I mean, this may not look too different than the other ones, but actually does because um, the color work in this one. So when I work with stranded color work, I said earlier that I always um, twist the yarn in after three to five stitches. <laughs> Depends what yarn I use. And But in this sweater, I kept on knitting without twisting the stitches. And then I twisted the stitches in the following round which is also a technique some knitters use. Um, and that's how this looked different, kind of. Um, but yeah, so the outside, it is still <laughs> the same, so it doesn't really matter, to be honest. It's just um, what you prefer, I guess. And I prefer the other technique. It was just, um, I want to do... When you knit for a designer, or maybe just a knitter, you want to try around sometimes. And um, that's how this one looks. And the name is uh, Soldier of Light, and it's also an older design. I made quite a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so much for that. I hope that was enough. <laughs> I can show you more inside sweaters if you're interested in the future. Um, but let me go to the next question. So, how to store yarn, you ask? Um, if you see my background, so I like to have my yarn in shelves just to see it but that's actually a really bad way to store it so there's so reasons for that I mean probably the obvious one you have heard of is moss you can just have moss and little nasty insects crawling into your beautiful yarn and destroying it which is one reason why you shouldn't have it just lay around and um, the second one is also for example the light will um, if you see like if you have yarn at the window the sun will actually bleach or bleach um, the yarn a little bit so it's not yeah it's not really a good way to store it um, the best way to store your yarn it's uh, it's not a really nice way it doesn't really look good <laughs> but it's <laughs> it is like this this is the best way to store your yarn and um, 
you don't need to have a big box like this, but um, yeah, this is nice. You can have a lid. No insects can get into it and no funny smells can get into it. Um, no dirt. I mean, mainly it's the insects, I guess. And um, yeah. Also, it's kind of, it keeps your house a little bit cleaner because, I mean, there's yarn dust and I have to vacuum almost every day in this room because there's so much yarn dust and, yeah, I have some yarn. I, um, I'm going to put this heavy box down now. <laughs> so, um, I have some yarns I have laying around, but uh, usually I use those uh, yarns quite soon and, um, also, when I get new yarns, I just want to put them somewhere where I can see them because they're pretty and I'm just looking forward so much to casting on the project with them. And, um, for example, I'm going to show you something. I got um, Lichen and Lace, um, what's it called? Yeah, Rose Hip. Rose Hip. So she made um, this really nice um, color and it's only... Um, I think a limited um, quantity she has, or time, she has this color available. And I'm using it for a future design. And um, yeah, so I haven't started on uh, casting on this project because I know I don't need to finish it until actually next year. <laughs> so, but I really want to start working on it. And it's, yeah, I like to just look at the yarn laying around. <laughs> I think it's really nice, um, yeah, but uh, so the best way is to just put it in boxes, plastic, airtight, <laughs> that's the best way, even if it doesn't look so nice, um, yeah, maybe have just the projects you're working on right now, laying it on and hide everything else, <laughs> and okay, next question. Um, a comfortable knitting position, um, okay, I... Um, okay, I like to sit um, on the floor, it's really my favorite and I usually would have my legs crossed and I like or I need to have my arms really, like I cannot sit in a chair, for example with like a, an armchair, I feel it's kind of really, uh, it might be the ADHD and Asperger, like it's just irritating, It's I just feel there's something in my way and I cannot move freely and um, so I like to sit on the floor and cross my legs and it's actually not really a healthy position because I lay forward a little bit so I can focus or like see what I'm doing um, but that's a position I like and I'm curious to hear what is your favorite place to knit <laughs> and uh, yeah maybe I can add that uh, one reason why I like to sit on the floor is something I kind of have always done but also I used to work and live in Japan for over seven years and it's very common you sit on the floor and over there I actually didn't really have um, like a, di uh, uh, a dining table which is like a regular sized table you would sit um, at like like this but um, I only had like a small table where you would sit really um, on the floor <laughs> so I kind of use it and I like it it's you have more, much more space Especially when you knit with colors, you can, um, I think that's also a question you actually have. Um, I'm going to answer that one. When I knit with colors, um, how do I place them? So that's also a reason why I like to sit on the floor, because I can just place them as far as away of each other as possible and kind of have the thread come in my direction. <laughs> and it kind of makes it easy to keep the colors separate and... No detangling, yeah, I need a lot of space when I'm knitting, <laughs> um, yeah, that's that question, and let me, Whew, I'm actually getting a bit warm here today, so, I've been wearing this sweater outside today, but I think from the talking, I get really warm, <laughs> so I have to put this away, um, the next question, um, what software I use as a knitwear designer? Um, several ones and um, I can recommend some if you're maybe new to knitting and you want to design your own pattern. Um, but first I will tell you what I use. Uh, so I have a design uh, background. I worked as a graphic designer and 
I also worked as a 3D artist, so what I use mainly right now is um, InDesign to uh, lay out the pattern. So I paint illustrations, for example, in Photoshop, um, because if you know my patterns usually have a lot of illustrations in them and um, I will add them in InDesign later on. And the charts I do in Excel or in um, Illustrator. Uh, that's what I mainly do right now. When I just started to um, just like made my first patterns, I used Word actually because I was okay, what am I gonna do? And um, since my design background was more in the 3D part, and um, I used Photoshop all my life, but not really in design so much. And it started first when I was designing my book, really. Um, okay, so. I can recommend using just Word if you want to start um, because it can be probably overwhelming. Uh, for me it's very natural because I've been using this for 15 years almost, the software, but it can be overwhelming if... I want to be a network designer if you have the sort and okay I'm going to learn how to use InDesign and it's not just something little you learn really quick to do the like this. I mean layout, the layout of a knitting pattern is not that difficult but Make it easy on yourself and use Word, for example, or whatever you like. Open Office doesn't matter really, as long as you can add pictures to it, to it if you want to, and um, text, <laughs> you should be good. And um, another software I can say what I'm also using. So I do a lot of Icelandic sweaters, and it's just the construction is very similar. But um, since I have a 3D background, I also use the software, it's called uh, Marvelous Designer. And you use this mainly in fashion and design, so if you... Um, it's not specifically for knitting at all. So if you design um, like a, a sewing pattern or a sewing design, you can use it as well. And I can explain it really quick. I know I'm when... When I start talking, I usually get really like <laughs> on that specific topic, but it might not be so interesting for you, so I just try to keep it short. Um, but imagine you have a 3D character in there standing and you want to construct a garment. So what you do, you imagine this garment, how it looks flat. Um, so of, let's say you want to knit the sweater in the round, you have to imagine first how it would look uh, flat and you can lay... Um, several patches of let's say cloth i'm just gonna call it cloth right now or fiber it it doesn't really matter because the material is irrelevant during that point and you can just lay it out and you can start the designing progress um by kind of like figuring out what fit you want for example that's just a little thing and um i think i got pretty much off topic because the question was what software do I use? And now I'm like, Bleh. <laughs> sorry guys. And I'm still nervous taking those videos and uh, I shouldn't be nervous. I heard this comments, I see them everywhere, but it's just like, I'm super introvert usually. And even if I don't like it, look like it, I'm always nervous. <laughs> so it's just, I probably have to take 50 more videos of this for it to stop. Um, okay. And cool yarns. I like to use right now that's the last question and um, yes I showed you already the one I showed you <laughs> so this and I showed you the West um, at the beginning of the video and I forgot to tell you the yarn I'm using so this yarn I got from a hobby and it was actually meant to be used on something else <laughs> it's just when I got the um, color um, since I don't have color cards, it was kind of not exactly what I imagined this color would look. And I absolutely love this color. It just didn't fit together how I wanted it to look with the other color I have. It's like a two-colored... Um, um, it's a shawl design. And um, if you... I shared at some point on Instagram a real... Um, where I'm showing you some uh, three sketches of shawls. And it's one of them. But um, yeah, so this is uh, Diablo with Kid Silk and right now, I think I have some Kid Silk in my box. Oh, let's see if I can grab and get it. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, there we go. Yes, it's a different color. I, I really like this right now. 
I never used really mohair and all those like little um, um, fluffy things you can add, <laughs> let's call it like that, before, but uh, since I kind of started, I cannot stop anymore, it's, like, oh, it makes a garment just so nice. <laughs> Um yeah, so it's for that and um let me think. I mean I always use I always have a project in Let Lobby on my needles, just always and um I will show you some more projects uh next week and have a test net for you and um yeah. <laughs> so I showed in the past um in my wonderful knitting vlog as well as on Patreon uh this pair of mittens. And it is a Patreon exclusive design I made. And um, now I'm looking for testing this for a, a vest version of this design. And um, so this sample was knitted in uh, Brooklyn Tweet and um, Let Lobby. <laughs> yes. And the vest I'm using. Uh, um, Beirut by Rosa Puma. And um, so the design, um, it's a simple vest, as uh, simple as color work can be. And the design, uh, construction design, the construction design is similar to um, traditional fair idle um, um, vests. And uh, so it has a staking. So you should keep that in mind if you're interested. It has a staking that you have to cut. And you have to cut on the arms, both sides, obviously as well as on the middle body because it's only that in one piece and then cut and um a funny story about this yarn uh so i'm not only using beiroa but i'm also using uh leftovers for the other colors so um you can knit this in two colors but i will be using all sorts of brown tones just it's all in kind of a color palette i've been thinking and dreaming about for a year now <laughs> So it's that and I have a funny story to tell you about this yarn um, because this yarn was uh, sponsored by um, Rosa Poma and it was sponsored for um, a sweater in my upcoming book coming out um, in less than two months, <laughs> Knit World. And um, yeah, so it was sponsored for that and I also used it for that sweater but uh, when I got the yarn, um, I have three knitters uh, who knit for me and I get the yarn usually here. And then I send it to them because it's just you will see when you see when you get my book if you have pre-ordered it and or ordered it or will order it. Um, each of the designs I'm showing is um, you will see it in different color combinations. Um, so it's over seventy samples for the book, and I cannot do that by myself. <laughs> so I have those knitters, and I sent the yarn. It got lost in the mail. And there's some certain time pressure when you make <laughs> designs for a book. So, shoot, I couldn't really wait for the post to find the package. And I maybe waited a week actually, and but they couldn't find it. And um, so I ordered new one and because I needed this yarn quick so the design and sample can be finished. And yeah, about three weeks later, the yarn was found. <laughs> so I have like the same yarn twice now and I'm using it for all sorts of things now. <laughs> um, yes, but that was everything and I hope I didn't jump around too much in this episode and please ask me questions if there's anything you would like me to talk about you can comment them below or you can... I had to... I sometimes have a QA on Instagram where I ask um, is there anything you would like me to answer you. <laughs> so I will look there as well, as well as on Patreon. Um, yes, but I hope otherwise, without the rumbling, you liked this episode and I see you next week. <laughs> bye bye!